So today we're going to look at what Java EE is all about and <coughs> how it helps us build enterprise applications. Even before we do that, of course, we're going to start out defining what enterprise edition means, importantly what enterprise application means, and we're going to look at how enterprise application architectures have evolved over a period of time. Okay, so as you may be aware, enterprise edition of Java is part of the Java platform. Okay, now when Java was released back in '96, it was of course released as just Java. You had JDK 1.0 available and JRE 1.0. Now as Java progressed from 1.0 to 1.0.1, 1.1.x, etc., it was increasingly becoming difficult for Sun to manage this whole growing technology as just Java because the variety of applications that you could develop with Java had also dramatically increased. That is, unlike in version 1.0 of Java where you could just write desktop based applications okay, with or without GUI, applets, etc., as we got closer to 1.2 release, you could develop Java applications which run in a mobile phone, you could develop Java applications which run as part of a PDA, and you could also develop Java applications which run as part of a server. Okay, so <clears throat> this whole wide gamut of technology, it was becoming increasingly difficult for Sun to manage as just Java. So what Sun did at around that time, at around 98 when Java 1.2 was about to be released, they branded this whole Java as Java 2 platform. There, the term 2 was never meant to be a version. It was more like it was a second generation Java or second avatar of Java. And they split this entire Java 2 platform into three different editions, each edition targeting a specific type of hardware. Okay. So if you wanted to develop Java applications which run on a mobile phone, PDA, etc., then you had an edition of Java called, which was then called Java 2 Micro Edition, which is now called Java Micro Edition. So your Java ME or J2 ME is nothing but an edition of Java using which you can develop Java applications for wireless devices. Okay. So it contains a stripped down form of the language where everything is optimized for low memory and such considerations. However, if your target hardware is a PC and not a wireless device such as a mobile phone or a PDA, in such a case, you would make use of an edition of Java called the standard edition. Okay, the standard edition is nothing but the good old core Java which has been available to us since the very 1.0 release. It was now rechristened as the standard edition of Java. And <clears throat> in terms of its abilities, Java 2 standard edition is like a superset over micro edition. You can do everything that you can do in micro edition. In addition to that, you have many more libraries, many more capabilities in the standard edition of Java. Now, similarly, if your target hardware is not a PC, but a high-end server, and you want to develop applications which run inside a high-end server, in such a case, you make use of an edition of Java called the Enterprise Edition. Okay, and Again, in terms of abilities, it is built on standard edition. What that means is everything that is part of the standard edition is also part of the enterprise edition. Plus, it contains lots of abilities which make sense in a high-end server environment. Well, these are the three different editions in which Java is available. Now, since a lot of developers would not know this historical perspective of how this Java 2 came about, it was causing a lot of confusion in the minds of a lot of developers as to why is this called 2 when the version is 1.4, 1.5, etc. So in the recent releases, Sun has decided to drop this 2 from all the names. So J2ME, J2SE, J2EE now become Java ME, Java SE and Java E. Okay, so it's just a change of name. Okay, so everything else remains pretty much the same with some enhancements, of course. <coughs> So that's what is Java EE or J2 EE. It's an edition of Java using which you can develop applications which run in a server environment. Now, if that was the case, why is it not called server edition? 
it would have been very simple to understand for people as to why it is not, uh, if it was called server edition. Why is this called enterprise edition? Okay, so we'll look at that. Here is how J2EE or Java EE can be defined. It's an open and standard based platform for developing, deploying, managing entire web enabled server centric and component based enterprise applications. I know it's a lot of jargons thrown into this definition. Okay, we are going to precisely see what this really means. Okay, so coming back to our question, why was it not called server edition? Why is it called enterprise edition? To understand that, we have to first answer the question, what is an enterprise application? We say Java EE claims that using it, you can develop enterprise applications. Now, we'll have to first define what an enterprise application means. Okay. Now, <clears throat> having a hard and fast definition for enterprise application is a difficult task. Pretty much like how you cannot define precisely what good art means, you cannot define what an enterprise application means. However, there are quite a few characteristics associated with enterprise applications. Okay, So we do not really go about calling small little utility applications as enterprise applications. Enterprise applications tend to be large in size. Okay, So enterprise applications are large in size. It's not just the size that determines whether it's an enterprise application or not. For example, if you were to open up the source code for, say, a word processor or MS Office, you'll find that it runs into tens of thousands of lines of code. That doesn't make it an enterprise application. So, in addition to being large in size, enterprise applications also have few other characteristics, such as they are distributed in nature. What that means is, all parts of the application are not running in the same machine. Different parts of the application are spread out over the network. Okay, So, they are large distributed applications, plus they are secure. Okay, Not that anybody can access any part of the application. Access control rules are very clearly specified. So these are large, distributed, secure. Plus we say enterprise applications tend to be scalable. Now what do we mean by this scalable? Scalability of an application, nothing but means the ability to add capacity to your application. Okay, suppose take an example of uh, online banking application. Say if you were to take a new budding ba bank and it's got about 50 branches, Maybe it has got a customer base of 5 million. Now, that application which is supporting a customer base of 5 million, tomorrow if they add more branches and more customers, maybe we are talking about 50 million or even more. So you should be able to add capacity to your application without having to rework on the code or the design of the application. So that's what we call scalability. So you'll be able to add capacity. In addition to that, <coughs> enterprise applications also tend to be highly available. What that means is they have very minimal okay, or no downtime at all. They are up and running 24 by 7. Okay, And even if there is a small failure in one of the components, that should not take the entire system down with it. So it needs to be continued to be available to customers or to the users of the application. And in addition, many of the enterprise applications are accessible through multiple types of clients. So going back to our online banking application, now there are more than one way in which you can transact with a bank. You can go to a branch and there will be an employee of the branch who uses a rich application to connect to the banking application or you could do internet banking. Okay, So through the browser you can connect back to the same banking application or you can go to an ATM and use the facility of an ATM that again talks to the same banking application. So here you can clearly see multiple types of clients being used to access the same enterprise application. Certainly, it will not be worth the cost and effort to have three different versions of the application for three different types of clients. So essentially, it's the same enterprise application which is offering the delivery of the application through multiple channels. Okay, So <clears throat> a typical enterprise application would have all these characteristics. Okay, So things that make up an enterprise application would be presentation logic, business logic, data access logic, and of course the underlying data model, as well as system services. What we mean 
by all this we shall explore in more detail next as we move into <clears throat> how the application architectures or how enterprise application architectures have evolved in the last decade and a half or so.